Hi everyone. In this video, let's have a look at the timetable module in Farina. You can find the timetable module under academics. So under the timetable module, before creating a timetable, we need to do certain settings. It begins with creation of class timing set. So you need to create the class timing set right here. So here is where you're going to define the class timings of your institution. So you can create a new class timing by going for the option new. Here you need to give a nomenclature of your class timings just to identify it. Once I've given the name, I'm going to open the class timing set by going for view class timings. So under this set, I'm going to create class timings for my classes. I can create it by going for add class timings. I can give a name for my class timing, say period one. In my institution, the first period might begin at nine o'clock. So I'm going to give the start time as nine o'clock and the period ends exactly at 10 o'clock. So I'm going to give the end time as 10 o'clock. In case if there is a break, you can enable this option and state this particular class timing is a break. So right now it's a working hour, so I'm not enabling this option. And this is how I can define the period. I'm going to save it. The same way I'm going to create class timings for my institution for 9 to 12. So let me give the other periods as well. It's from 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock. Let me say there's a 10 minutes of break. So I'm gonna give a break option here. I'm giving the start time as 11 o'clock and the break end time to be 11.10. And I'm gonna enable this option so it's easy for Fedina to recognize this particular class timings as a break. So I'm going to save it and I'm going to create one more period right here. Which begins at 11.10 till 12 o'clock. So let me say this is how my class timings are there in my institution. So it begins at 9 o'clock and the classes ends at 12 o'clock and this is how I want to define it. So once I've defined it as a class timing set, I'm going to assign this particular class timing set for a class or a batch. So you can go back to timetable and there's one more option called set weekdays and class timing set. So here I can have a common weekdays and class timing set for all the batches in my institution or I can select one of the classes, say class one, and I can select a particular batch among them. And now I can assign the weekdays and the class timing set. Let me say I'm going to work from Mondays to Fridays for a particular class timing set. I can assign Monday to Friday for a one class timing set that we've created. So I'm assigning the class timing set that I've created from Monday to Friday. Let me say on Saturdays, there is a different class timings for the students. So in that case, I'll have to create a new class timing set in the previous setting and assign it here. So right now I'm going to assign a different class timing that I've already created. So I'm going to assign one of the class timings that I've already created. So once you've assigned, Monday to Friday will have a different class timing set and Saturdays will have a different class timing set just because I've assigned it differently. The same way you can select the weekdays and class timing set for other batches as well and save the changes. So once this is done, you can go back and to create a timetable. You can go for create timetable, give a start time and end time for your timetable. You need to remember that you can create a timetable only once for a duration. Multiple timetables for a single duration is not possible here. So let me give a start date here and an end date 
and create a timetable. Right now, the timetable has been created for this time duration. I'm going to select the batch for which I'm going to create a timetable. Let me go for the batch class 1. And here you can see, as per how I have assigned in the class timing set, the classes begins at 9 o'clock and it ends at 12 o'clock. Whereas on Saturdays, I've assigned different class timing sets and you can find it has a different class timings. It begins at 10 o'clock and it ends at 11.40. So this is how you can differentiate the class timing set based on the batches that you have. I can assign subjects to the timetable by selecting the periods in which I want to assign the subject. I'm going to select the cells right now assign a subject and I can find more than one employee being assigned for the subject. I can assign an employee and select for the option. So now the employee is being assigned for this period. Let me say I want to assign a subject maths. I'm going to select the period and I'm going to select the subject maths and I can find an employee. I can assign the employee right now and the employee is being assigned for the classes. The same thing I'm going to do for the other subjects as well. I'm assigning the classes a subject. So let me select a subject science. I'm going to assign an employee. I'm going to select the class. I'm going to select the subject. I'm going to assign both the employees for this particular period. And now you can see both the employees have been assigned for a particular period and in a time duration. In case if there is any clash, it will pop up a warning message. So this is how timetable can be created by assigning the employees. All I have to do is select the cell, select the subject, select the employees and assign them. Just like how we have assigned two employees for a particular subject, both the employees will have the option of marking attendance for the students. So right now we are done with assigning the employees and subjects in the timetable and we've created a timetable for the batch. Let's move back to the timetable module and have a look at the timetable that we've created. We can go for view timetable, select the time duration, select the batch for which we've created the timetable and here you can have a look at the timetable that we've created. You can see the employees who have been assigned for this period. You can see the subject and you can see the time duration. You have an option to take a PDF report or a CSV report. Under the edit timetable option, you get to see the timetable ranges that you've created and you can edit the range or you can edit the entries. Let's have a look at the teacher's timetable. So on the teacher's timetable, all you have to do is choose the time duration and you need to have a look at the teachers who's been assigned. So here you can see the list of teachers who's been assigned in this time duration and you can see the teacher's timetable. I'm selecting one employee and here I can see on Monday, this employee has English from 9 to 10. The same employee has class from 11.10 to 12 o'clock on Wednesdays and so on. You can have a look at each employee's timetable. You can take a PDF report or a CSV report. The same way you can switch between other employees and have a look at their timetable as well. So this is how a teacher's timetable will look like for an administrator. Let me move with the work allotment. So on the work allotment, we have an option where we can assign an employee for a particular subject. So here you get to see all the batches and courses that we have created. And we get to see all the subjects that has been assigned for the particular class. And you can assign an employee right here. Let me say I want to assign an employee for C1. So I can choose one employee here for the subjects by selecting an employee from the drop down. So right here under work allotment, you can do only single employee allocation. 
If you want to do multiple employee allocation, you have an option on your right hand side which goes for assigning multiple employees. Here it will take you back to the human resource module where you can select the batch, you can select the subject and you can assign more than one employee. Just like how I have assigned it here. So let's go back to the work allotment. And on our right hand side there is a status bar that displays the employee names and a status saying deficit, remaining and OK. These are the three different status that represents the work allotment for each employee. Let's say there's a status called remaining for this employee Abdul. It says six remaining. This remaining represents there are six more periods that this employee has to complete to achieve his targets or achieve the amount of periods that has been assigned for him. And we can find a status called OK. That means the employee Raj has completed exactly the same number of periods that he is supposed to perform. You can find status, say deficit, with a number here. The deficit represents that these employees have done more than what has been assigned for them and the number shows the count. So that is how work allotment displays the option to assign employee for each subject and the work allotment that is done for every employee right here. So next step we have is the institution timetable. Here is where you get to see the institution timetable. For the current date in, ca in case if there is an institution timetable you can have a look at the institution timetable right here. So below you get to see a institution timetable for class 2. On today's date there is a period say English by Gina at 10 o'clock and a social science at 11 o'clock. So this is how an institution timetable looks like. We have a timetable tracker. Under timetable tracker I'm going for the option swap timetable and I'm going to select one of the batches say C2 and for today's date I can see an employee Gina has been assigned for the time duration say 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock. And I want to assign a different employee to this time duration because this employee is not available right now. So in that case, if I want to change the employee for today's day alone, I can do the swapping right here by going for the option change. I can select a department so that I can select the employees who belong to the department. I'm going to select a different department here. Let me say mathematics. And I get to see the employees who belong to the mathematics department right here. So these are the employees who belong to the mathematics department. I can select any of these employee. And in case if I want to assign the same subject English, I can select the subject from the drop down. Or I can assign max again and I can save it. So now the employee Gina has been replaced by the employee Raghav for this date alone. So you can perform this kind of a swapping for a particular date and you can also have a look at the swap timetable report right here. So here you get to see the swapping that has happened in today's date. You can see this employee Gina has lost a period that has been assigned for her and Raghav has scored an extra period more than what has been assigned for him. You can have a look at it by going for view details. You can see the details about it. You can take a CSV file as an export. You can export this as a CSV file too. So that's all about timetable tracker. Let's move forward to the classroom allocation. Let's move ahead with the classroom allocation. Under classroom allocation, we have manage buildings. So under the manage buildings option, we are going to create buildings. Just like how I've created, you're going to create the buildings that is available in your institution. Just to let Farina know what are the classrooms that is available and where do you want to assign these students. So I have created the building names here by going for add buildings and I've given the name of the building. So inside the building that I've given, I'm going to create the rooms that are available. I have selected the options add room and I have given the name of the room and the capacity of the room. 
I have added three rooms in a building the same way I have added rooms in all the buildings. Now I can move back to the allocation option where I can go for a weekly allocation or a date specific allocation. Let me go for a weekly allocation. For a particular timetable, I can assign this classroom for a class. I'm going to view and I'm going to see which are the rooms that is available right here. So you can see for this time duration, C1 and C2 are available and in C2, the subject English is being assigned to classroom number 02. Now from the math subject, I'm going to assign a classroom. I can assign a classroom by selecting the building. First, I need to select one of the buildings in North Tower and these are the rooms that has been available in the North Tower. I'm going to select a particular room, drag and drop it here. Now, the capacity of the room is less. Do you want to allocate is what Farina is asking us. If you want to continue, you can continue for the option. So this is how classroom allocation can be done. For a timetable, it can be done on a weekly basis or a date specific option. So that's all about timetable module. Thanks for listening.